It will likely take years before we really understand the impact of the pandemic on the next generation. Teachers are already seeing learning setbacks. A study by the National Center for Education Statistics shows reading scores had the largest drop in 30 years. The average score for nine year old students has fallen by five percentage points since 2022. Math scores decreased for the first time in the history of testing, down by seven percentage points for nine-year-old students. So what can parents, schools, and communities do to help their students get back on track? Catherine Strunk is a professor and the director of the Education Policy Innovation Collaborative at Michigan State University. Catherine Strunk, so nice to have you join us. So let's look specifically at the state of Michigan. We know that there are 5,600 third graders who, from their reading and math scores, did so poorly that in fact they're eligible to repeat third grade. That seems pretty shocking to me. What was your reaction to that data? No, I think it's alarming. So it's about 6% of Michigan third graders who scored at least a year behind grade level on the third grade assessment at the end of the year. That's up from about 4% in 2019 prior to the pandemic. So then who's in that group of 5,600? One in four students in the state's lowest performing schools, their turnaround schools, are scoring at that low level in reading proficiency in ELA in third grade. Um, one, about four and a half times the proportion of African-American students as white students, four and a half times the number of low-income students as their wealthier peers. So we're seeing that the students who are already struggling and already were sort of disenfranchised from the system prior to the pandemic, they have been hit the hardest. So how do parents decide if their kids should stay back? The retention literature is pretty conclusive that while we may see short-term gains from retention in the kind of third, fourth, fifth grade years, those gains die out over time. And in fact, we see pretty bad outcomes for kids who are retained in the long run, higher dropout rates, lower engagement with the education system over time. So as a parent, I would think about how we could really focus our instruction on helping to accelerate our students' learning. And I would hope that the student would not be retained in third grade. There's some information, some data that shows that it's going to take many, many months before you're able to close that gap. It's not going to be a, a very quick fix. It's not going to be this year and we're all caught up, caught up. It's not going to be three years maybe and we're all caught up. And schools are going to have to figure out how do they get additional resources to continue providing more teachers, more assistants, more paraprofessionals, more social workers, everything to help these students accelerate their learning over the next many years. You're saying invest, invest, invest to help close this gap. Where do you see that money coming from? And the federal government did a huge investment in public education, and I hope that they'll understand that the schools need to be continued to be given this money in order to continue providing these services. In addition, we need to prepare more teachers. And for, to do that, we need to be able to recruit them into these districts that many teachers don't want to teach in. What's that relationship, uh, Catherine, between a student and how they do right now and, and how they could potentially fare as an adult? What we know is that the way that students do in third grade in school is actually very predictive of how they're going to do both later in their academic careers and then later in life. So employment opportunities, income generation, things like that. So we really want to get it right in early elementary school. Catherine Strunk, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me.